Needless to say, fashion is most exciting when it transcends its primary function. That's to say protecting you from the cold or even protecting your modesty. This winter, fashion designers have decided to focus on the 1970s and 80s, reworking iconic looks into something contemporary and universal. The result? Confident and colourful silhouettes. At Véronique Leroy, the focus is on mastering a playful allure. It's all in the shoes, the way they're put together. It's about the cinch and belt, but also the shoulders. Proportion is really big this season. That contrast between the shoulders and the ankles. Coats, meanwhile, are oversized, created by building up layers of mesh. Shoulders are big, but without ever straying into the cartoonish proportions shoulder pads assumed in the late 70s. But the real news is in the details. There are quite a few belts with wallets attached with the chain, also attached to the trousers. You certainly won't be losing your keys. So you can get robbed, you are free as a lorry driver. A lorry driver? Yeah, they're on the road, they're free. Designers are always looking for new ways to recreate that sensation of freedom. Young Dutch designer Esther Louise Dohut Mace takes inspiration from birds in flight. They can fly around freely, but also come together to form enormous shapes in the sky, a phenomenon known as murmuration. It's about all these different elements, different identities moving as one and being very compact and then falling out of each other as very transparent. And then that was sort of, that was so mesmerizing to me that it became the whole essence of the whole collection. Designer Bill Gayton experiments with multiple identities and genres. In 2011, he was handed the reins to a label he'd worked at as an assistant for over 20 years, John Galliano. Starting point was actually some pictures I saw of um, First World War officers um, with very femininely dressed women. Um, so I sort of started off with that, mixing men's tailoring with feminine dresses. Um, which is kind of iconic Galliano anyway. But again, it's a real dressing up sensibility, quite aristocratic in a way. It's a collection that's drawing admiration from unlikely quarters. A very elegant, very chic. Uh, some of the pieces were very couture. You are now a real fashion expert. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was a fashion expert, but I'm learning. I'm very open to learning. and. It's not something easy that you just pick up, it's something you really have to be open-minded about and, and uh, that's why I like going and seeing all these different shows because you get to see all the different styles and um, all these different creative minds that come up with these beautiful and some, sometimes really wacky designs. Since the 1970s, Kenzo has been synonymous with a fusion of different cultures. This winter, the label's muse is a Japanese manga character. There are references that aren't simply ethnocentric. There are whole loads of different cultures. What hit me was that it was both feminine and warrior-like. But maybe I just see war and warriors everywhere. That's the fighter in you. Who knows? The collection owes a debt to both Japanese cartoon heroine Sailor Moon and the Royal Navy. We really had this idea of really, you know, Eastern culture celebrating Western culture. And we really wanted to take this idea of almost exploding these Western ideas into fun things, whether they were duffel coats or sailor jackets, and taking these codes and really giving it a fun play. Chinese designer Masha Ma discovered ceramic techniques in Japan and how to construct clothes in London at Alexander McQueen. She creates something, takes it apart, and then puts it back together. After it's done, it was even more beautiful than before. So the idea was you use the most expensive material in the world to fix something broken. So the whole idea was to express something imperfect in the most perfect way. As for Californian designer Rick Owens, fashion means teamwork. He attributes his success to his Franco-Algerian wife and muse, Michelle Lamy. I think the whole muse thing really works because he likes structure, and I'm a little more all over the place. 
He actually works miracles. Owens can also be prone to a spot of metaphysical contemplation. I think that we evaporate and become part of of something bigger than ourselves and that's more eternal and that um, that is, is a positive energy moving forward. Now to Indian designer Manisha Rora. He can't stand the prevailing culture of instant gratification in fashion. He thinks good things should come to those who wait. I think it has, you have to create the desire of wanting something. You have to want something and wait for it till it comes to the shops and then you should have it. You will appreciate it even more. It's a fine balance, especially with the see now, buy now mentality of so many consumers. Either way, one thing is certain. It's time to decide what to wear next winter.